Hey everyone, this is Nixon from Starry Homestead. In our last videos, we covered the types of lighting, color temperatures, and how to match lighting fixtures with different interior styles. And in today's video, we're going to dive deeper into some other key factors in lighting design. First up, let's talk about the Color Rendering Index, CRI. CRI measures how accurately a light source reveals the true colors of objects compared to the natural sunlight. The CRI scale ranges from 0 to 100. The higher the number, the better the color rendering ability. A CRI of 100 means that the colors under the light appears the same as they would under natural sunlight, I would say. And generally, a CRI of 90 or above is considered excellent. And having a high CRI can make your home looks warmer, more natural, and brings out every detail in every true form. But does that mean you should always go for the high CRI? I must say not necessarily. Chasing a high CRI can have its own downsides eventually. For one, it can increase the cost of your light fixtures. Achieving a high CRI often requires more advanced technology and materials. So which drives up the price. Additionally, high CRI lighting might reduce the light's efficiency and sometimes the color temperature might not be accurate, leading to issues like the light appearing too red or too green. So in home renovation, while it's important not to choose lighting with too low of a CRI, it's also not necessary to chase the highest CRI. A CRI below 70 can distort colors and in your home, leading to visual fatigue or even affecting your mood if you're exposed for it to long. In kitchens or dining areas, a low CRI lighting can make food looks unappetizing and less fresh. And for everyday living, a CRI of 85 and above is usually sufficient. So for areas like the dining room, the bedroom and the study, it's recommended to choose lighting with a CRI above 90. This ensures that while you're cooking or doing makeup or even working, the colors are rendered more accurately, filling your home with vibrant and lively hues. The second point to discuss is brightness, which will have contributing factors of voltage, illuminance, and luminous flux. So beyond the type of light, color temperature, and CRI, you also need to know how bright your home needs to be. So let's break down these concepts. We often think that the voltage of the light bulb indicates its brightness, but this isn't entirely accurate. Luminous flux measured in lumens LM describes the total amount of visible light emitted by a source per unit of time. So basically, the higher the lumen count, the brighter the light source and vice versa. Luminous flux is a key indicator of overall brightness and is directly related to light efficiency and voltage. So it's a common misconception that the higher the voltage means the brighter the light. But this overlooks the efficiency of the light source. For example, two 15 watts bulbs can have different brightness levels due to differences in efficiency. So when choosing lighting, don't just look at voltage, but also pay attention to the luminous flux. Now let's talk about illuminance. Illuminance measured in lux, LX, is the amount of luminous flux received per unit area or how much light a particular area gets. So for general household activities, a lighting level of 100 lux is a typical. While reading and writing usually requires around 300 lux, when reading or working at home, a combination of a desk lamp and an overhead light can provide good illumination. So for elderly people's room might require higher illumination to support their daily activities. And if you have elderly members at home, consider choosing lights with higher illuminance, for example, to help reduce visual fatigue. That's it for today's lighting tips. We hope you find this information really helpful. And if you like our video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any question, feel free to drop a comment down below. This is Nixon, and I'll see you next time.